Well, thanks very much, Diane, and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to this year's I2B2 Transmart Foundation Symposium, entitled I2B2 Digital Twin and the Future of AI in Medicine. I want to thank the I2B2 Transmart Foundation, including its board chair, Zach Kohani, and executive director, Diane Keough, for the invitation to open today's exciting symposium. I would also like to thank today's speakers, including uh, notably, Dr. Robbie Goldstein, Commissioner of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, for giving the keynote address. Dr. Chris White, Partner and Managing Director of Special Projects at Microsoft. And Dr. Zach Kohani, Inaugural Chair of the Harvard Medical School Department of Biomedical Informatics for a fireside chat. And also the various panelists and moderators in the in-person and virtual audience for coming together to discuss data networks and artificial intelligence applied to healthcare and research. This year's symposium brings together experts from academia, public health, hospitals, and industry to discuss the uses of I2B2 and related software platforms. Over the course of the next two days, you will be hearing about data linkage in hospitals and public health departments, artificial intelligence in medicine, large language models, national data networks, and precision medicine, among other topics. In my role as Dean for Research Initiatives and Global Programs at Harvard Medical School, I help to plan and coordinate the work of the school's basic and social science departments, and I also oversee local and global interdisciplinary and interinstitutional research initiatives as well as the school's technology platforms. I also have the privilege to co-chair the Executive Committee of the Massachusetts Consortium on Pathogen Readiness alongside George Daly, Dean of Harvard Medical School. As many of you know, MassCPR was established at Harvard Medical School in March 2020 in response to COVID-19. Notable successes of the consortium have included catalyzing SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development and deployment, mapping the structure of SARS-CoV-2 virus, understanding the immune responses to SARS-CoV-2 infection, and analyzing and predicting viral variants, among many other accomplishments. By bringing together hundreds of investigators across more than 17 universities, medical schools, research institutes, teaching hospitals, government agencies, and biopharmaceutical companies across Massachusetts, MassCPR has offered a blueprint for global cooperation and collaboration, demonstrating that when we break down barriers across scientific disciplines, modes of intellectual inquiry, disparate institutions, and geographic borders, we can tackle even the greatest of challenges. Most recently, Harvard Medical School and MassCPR have been asked to lead the public health education effort for the United States as part of the Pathogen Genomics Center of Excellence Network funded by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The New England PGCOE, led by the Mass Department of Public Health and the Broad Institute, includes multiple MassCPR investigators and works alongside four other national centers to prevent, control, and respond to microbial threats of public health importance. Having worked over the past four years to combat the massive health impacts of COVID-19, MassCPR continues to foster collaborations to strengthen our nation's preparedness for future health crises. My office's wide range of activities inevitably involves establishing and managing data flows to enable and facilitate biomedical research. As our departments and partner institutions continue to grow, new questions and challenges arise around data pipelines. It is through collaborations with experts in data technologies that we're able to address these questions and overcome challenges. One of MassCPR's main goals, which will be the subject of the first panel session this morning, is to build a federated data network for infectious disease across multiple sites. Harvard Catalyst and various collaborators across MassCPR, including at Harvard Medical School, Beth Israel Leahy Health, Mass General Brigham, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, the Boston Public Health Commission, Boston Medical Center, the Broad Institute, and other institutions are playing an instrumental role in providing the technical resources to achieve this goal. The I2B2 Transmart Foundation is recognized for pioneering and supporting the development of modular open source software platforms for query exploration and analysis of clinical translational and genomics data. These tools are particularly needed at a time of unprecedented large-scale collaborations on human cohort studies, clinical trials, 
and translational research, among others. Data integration and data interoperability are now common terms used to designate the need to associate and translate data sets for interpretation. We've seen tremendous progress in this space over the last decade with the development of customized tools for specific applications and the widespread adoption of artificial intelligence to facilitate and improve data interpretation, including in medicine, public health, and the biomedical sciences. Whereas technical barriers are increasingly easily overcome, data usage is subject to well-defined, often rigid governance policies and regulations that ensure the protection of sensitive information. In particular, regulations often make it difficult to collaborate on projects and programs that generate large complex data sets. Checkpoints are implemented and rules are defined and enforced that ultimately limit access to useful information. How then can we achieve the linkage of data across institutions to enable public health surveillance and monitoring, clinical trials and investigation and outbreak responses? Customizing data access definitions to relevant use cases seems to be an obvious answer, but extending this answer to also include building trust may even be more important. Trust between data providers and the end users of information is essential if we're to make the best use of data information and prevent future health crises. COVID-19 highlighted data access limitation as one of the main barriers to understanding virus transmission and infectivity, severely hampering our ability to respond. But COVID-19 also broke down barriers of communication and collaboration to allow an unprecedented joining of forces. Today, we should not wait for the next threat to hit us, but instead prepare for this eventuality. Part of this preparation is to ensure that responders can learn from large data sets and gain access to networks that will enable the timely response that can avert a potential outbreak. Building such a network is one of MassCPR's main goals as part of its mission to help prepare and protect the nation against infectious disease. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Robbie Goldstein, the Commissioner of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health since April 2023. Prior to joining the DPH, Robbie was a senior policy advisor at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an infectious disease physician at Massachusetts General Hospital, and a faculty member at Harvard Medical School. Trained in infectious diseases with a specialty in HIV treatment and prevention, Dr. Goldstein focused his clinical work on providing care to those living with and at risk for HIV. His experience in patient care and health policy is a driver of his public health pursuits, identifying and working to eliminate barriers to offer equitable access to care to all residents in the Commonwealth. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Commissioner Robbie.